Have you ever wondered if a certain Kamen Rider series is for you? Well, you just found the series for your problem. This is Kamen Rider Should You Watch, the series where I tell you all the basic information about a Kamen Rider series so you can decide if a certain season is right for you. For our debut episode, we will be talking about Kamen Rider Zero One, the first Kamen Rider to debut in the Reiwa era. Thanks to that fact, Zero One is relatively standalone outside of its crossover movie with the preceding writer, Geo. Although, I do think it is important to clarify for Geo being probably the hardest season of Kamen Rider to get into in terms of material to watch beforehand. Making this crossover have a fair bit of required material to watch before the movie. Luckily for you, if you want to watch Zero One, this crossover only adds extra world building. It doesn't really affect the main story of the show and can be skipped, making the show fairly accessible. But since we're on the topic of required viewing, let's start with that. Let's get into what you will need to watch if you want to watch Kamen Rider Zero One. To get the full storyline of the season, you obviously first will have to watch Kamen Rider Zero One. Now, while technically not part of the main series, I would also recommend watching the show's epilogue movie, Real Time. Luckily, Kamen Rider Zero One is actually quite unique in terms of writer shows, due to the fact that this series is currently the only Kamen Rider to have an official English sub on Blu-ray released by Shout Factory. This release just so happens to come with Real Time included. Although the $60 Blu-ray is often discounted, I do get hesitation in buying the full series though. It is a big commitment. So if you want to watch the show for free with ads, you can also find the full series and movie on Pluto TV for free. But I get what you're probably thinking. What help does knowing how to watch Zero One give you if you don't know if you even want to watch it? To help with that, here is a basic plot synopsis for the series. Kamen Rider Zero One is the story of a failed comedian named Aruto Hiden. After the death of his grandfather, Aruto is left as the next in line to be CEO of his grandfather's company, Hiden Intelligence, a technology company that primarily exports human gears, human-like robots who help humanity in their everyday lives. Although, Aruto is at first hesitant to take over the company since he wishes to continue his comedy career, after the rise of a terrorist group who is hacking human gears and turning them into monsters, Aruto accepts the position so he can take the power exclusive to the CEO, Kamen Rider Zero One. Using the power to stop the rampaging Humagear, Aruto's battle soon becomes a three-way war between Metsubo Jinrai.net, the terrorist group who is using Humagears to eliminate humanity, Ames, an organization who wish to protect humanity even if it means scrapping every Humagear, and Aruto, who believes both sides can live in peace. Overall, I'd say on our tone scale of 1 to 5, 1 being a very serious show and 5 being a very lighthearted show, Zero One is about a 3 out of 5. Zero One, while always up for telling jokes, still often gets serious with themes of discrimination, cyclical hate, gaining of sentience, and fatherhood. But then again, that stuff is boring. Let's be real, if you're interested in any Tokusatsu series, it is most likely due to the designs. And let me just say, Zero One doesn't disappoint. Before I show you any suits, just so you know, to avoid any major spoilers, I will only be showing suits that appear within the first 10 episodes of the show. Getting into it, Zero One has, for the most part, a very simplistic, but futuristic design philosophy for pretty much every suit. The suits mainly have three different types of designs mainly related to the three starting factions. Zero One's design is by far the most basic, with the main suit being completely black and silver, with the yellow armor being unfolded onto the suit. This design is mainly left untouched through Aruto's side forms, with the yellow shifting to the side and being replaced by a different colored armor for whatever form he is using. Our second main design is for Ames. Both Vulcan and Valkyrie are primarily white, with their primary colors working more as accents on their suits. Finally, the most complicated suits we get during the first 10 episodes are those of Metsubo Jinrai, with Kamen Rider Jin and Hirobi having their primary pink and purple suits adorned with armor that looks more like it was made out of scrap metal, compared to the sleek modern material of the other riders. If you like the technological aesthetic, then these designs might just end up being your favorites. Now that all the basic information about the show is out of the way, the final thing you probably want to know is the show's reception amongst the fanbase. 
Keep in mind, this is not my opinion on the show, just the common sentiment that I have seen regarding the show. To best explain the reception of Zero One, it's important to acknowledge the four main story arcs of the series. These arcs are the Metsubo Jinrai arc, the Zyre arc, the Heen Manufacturing arc, and finally the arc. Arc. The overall consensus of the Kamen Rider fandom seems to be to rank the story arcs like this. At the top, we have the Metsubo Jinrai arc, followed closely by the Arc arc. The next two I've seen varying opinions on, but the most common opinion is that the next best arc is the Heen Manufacturing arc, with the Zyre arc coming in last for many people. Obviously, this is just a consensus I've seen from the fans, everyone is entitled to their own opinions, and there are going to be people who disagree with this ranking, including myself. I would also be mistaken if I didn't mention what would have to be one of the most important facts about starting the series. During the airing of the Hidden Manufacturing arc, the show's production had to be halted due to the 2020 pandemic. This happened after episode 35. This left the production with four already written scripts that needed to be altered extremely. After that, the planned 49 episode runtime of the show was cut down to 45 episodes. This led to drastic quicker pacing for the final arc, but for more positive information, I do think it is also important to say, if you do end up liking Zero One, like most modern series the show does have multiple V-Cinemas and special that you can watch after finishing the series, which might help you get more of your Zero One fix if you like the show. But that's about it. That's pretty much all the information I can give you. If I helped you make a decision if you want to watch Kamen Rider Zero One, then please give this video a like and maybe drop me a sub. I'm going to hopefully be doing more of these videos because I see a lot of people really struggling to decide if a certain series is right for them. So hopefully if someone's ever struggling with that, just show them this video or show them any of the future videos I make on this topic and hopefully I can help. But I'll stop wasting your time. Hopefully I'll see you later. Bye.